Hey, what is up everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful time. Here we have the Archmage Ice Nova Hierophant in Path of Exile. We got a similar setup as last time, but with a little bit more investment and a change of our main skill. And here we're going with the Ice Nova of Frostbolts. That's been a quite a popular setup with the recent buff to Archmage. And if you haven't seen my low budget version of Archmage, then I just real, uh, quickly here explain how it works. And basically you get uh, flat added lightning damage equal to a percent of your unreserved maximum mana instead of scaling from the mana cost as it did before. Uh, really strong as you not only will get uh, tons of damage from this by stacking mana, but we're also getting defense from this as well as we are specking into mind over matter, uh, which makes us take 40% uh, of damage from mana before life. And Ice Nova of Frostbolt is a transfigured gem and basically gave the Ice Nova skill a 50% damage multiplier when cast on frost bolts and can be cast from four bolts at the same time and this ends up with a huge shotgun effect dealing tons of damage if you compare this with ball of lightning it's just ridiculous how good it is uh, around three times damage i would say if you manage to have the frost bolts up all of the time and in this setup we're also making the frostbolt trigger from us from using the Gitava's Thirst Unique. And here we get a 50% chance to trigger Socrates skill when you spend at least 100 mana. Just a huge quality of life to have this, but it's not required, you could self-cost if you want to. For me, I'm just hooked uh, with this current setup and uh, one thing that's important here is uh, that you need to have your Ice Nova cost at least 100 uh, to make it able to proc, so do keep that in mind uh, so you don't accidentally reduce the cost of the skill too much. And with Frostbolt you want to link it with either Volley support or a greater multi-projectile support. I'm more in favor of Volley as it shows in a straight line instead of spreading uh, as the greater multi-projectile does. The build also is using 4 curses in total and you also want to put 2 of them in the helm and the other 2 we can set up with a Arcanist brand which is just going to be triggering uh, the other 2 curses for us for bosses or harder enemies. And you can play around with what you like here. I'm going with Assassin Mark and also Elemental Weakness on the helmet and those will be up all of the time. And for the brand we are just having Conductivity and also Enfeeble. To be able to have 4 curses we are using the Anthem Unique Ring and here we get our curses limit equal to our maximum power charges. And we get 3 by default and another one from being specced into Convocation of Power from our Ascendancy which also giving us endurance charges for some physical damage reduction and also elemental resist. Arcan Cloak is a must have I feel for the mom builds and it's no different from this one. Uh, once activated we spend a portion of our mana to grant a buff that takes some damage from hits and also provide us with more flat lightning damage. And with this we want to link it with automation support, also increase duration and then Arcane Surge. And uh, Arcane Surge is just really nice to have here. It will proc each time we are using this skill and it provides both cost speed and also mana region for the build. Seal of Power is another buff that uh, we can use to gain even more flat like damage uh, if we stand on the sigil. The sigil gains stages as you spend money in it, making the buff even more powerful, stacking up 4 times. And for the auras we're using Determination here, linked with a Eternal Blessing support, which makes the aura not reserve any mana, which is crucial for this build as we are using Archmage in our main link. And this also makes it so we can't have any other auras that will reserve mana, so we can then use a Arrogant support linked with Clarity for some extra mana region here, and this will then reserve a small portion of our life instead. The last skill is our mobility skill and it's called Frostblink of Wintry Blast. And this is a transfigured version of the Frostblink skill, uh, making the skill have no cooldown so we can use it freely. And as we already invested in so much cost speed, it's a really nice mobility skill to use here. Not required, but once you get used to it, it's uh, hard not to use it for any build that's uh, invested in cost speed, I feel. 
Defense overall is improved a ton from the low budget version, with floss up we are at the moment at a effective hit pool of 126k, and this I feel is really really nice as we basically steal on most of the gear that I have from the low budget version, uh, with some small changes, but I still would set this current setup under 10 divines or so, and it's uh, kind of hard with the figure on it uh, as most of the gear uh, is... Uh, self-found or crafted, except for the uniques. We also made it so we are now element immune by using an ancestral vision, which make modifiers to chance to suppress spell damage also apply to chance to avoid elemental ailments at 50% of their value. Uh, as of now we're capped on spell suppression, so we get 50% from this. We're also using a shield here, which we're getting 35% more from, and also the last 15 we are getting from the Eater of World Implicit on our boots. And this can go up to a max of 32%. So this can give you some extra room if you're not able to get a good roll on your shield. Alternative, you can also use a Shaper Boost base here. But this will use up a suffix slot and you will also not be able to use a Eater of World Implicit on those boots. So do keep that in mind. Another great defense upgrade is the new Perennis Pact Jewel, and this can be played around with a bit, uh, as you can get different modifiers on this item. I went with increased armor, and here we get 7% from each passive that we picked up, adding up to a total of 140% increase to armor from this uh, alone, which is huge boost to health with our physical hits here. Chaos Resist is another one that's really really good to use here. We get 4% uh, per point here, adding up to a total of 80%. We still spec into Unwavering Stance for the stun immunity, but this also makes us unable to avoid hits, which is also important that we have uh, some extra armor on us. Other than that, still spell suppress capped as mentioned before. We, we have a capped chaos resist and also a combination of spell damage here, leech as energy shield from the light eater passive and also from our flaws with a 10% leech is instance from the monster here. Really helps out as an extra defensive layer. Overall the build just feels really strong both defense and offense. Let's take a look on the rest of the gear here. We already went over the uniques. We got the ring here and also the helm. And this is for the curses and also the automation of uh, Frostbolt. And we also really quickly mentioned the shield here and also the boost, which we are using for the ailment immunity. And uh, for the weapon, here you want to go for spell damage, cast speed, mana, and critical strike chance, and multiplier. And on the gloves, you can also go for lightning damage leech as life as implicit from Eater of World, as we don't have any life recovery really, and it's uh, very helpful in those situations where you need it. However, this means that you will have to get lightning exposure from another source, and uh, awakened lightning penetration support is the way to go here, as it also provides a 10% chance to inflict the lightning exposure on hit. Once again hits level 5. And on the rest of the gear, just uh, basically try to go for resist, life, you want mana and also some mana regen. And then for the amulet, we still got the instinct anoint to make us able to cap spell suppression. And uh, this is uh, really easily done by two sapphire oils and also one azer oil. And for the flask, we got a Seething Divine Flask, which is instant, and this is also with bleed removal as a suffix. And then we're also using one of each respective element here. Uh, we have a Sapphire, a Ruby, and also a Topaz Flask, uh, with some increased resist and also to max resist for each respective element. And now also when we are a crit build, we also went with a diamond flask here for some increased critical strike chance. And uh, you could also go for a normal granite here for some extra armor if you prefer that as well. And as before, they are all with the use when shardless reads full enchant for a automation for some quality of life here. And they all have a gain shardless when you are hit by an enemy. And this works really good as we can't avoid any hits. 
for the surfaces on these floors, we are going with increased car speed here. We have one with reduced effect of curses. We have one with increased armor and also one with a percent of spell damage leash as extra energy shield during this effect. For the pension, we change to Soul of Solaris now for some extra damage reduction, both physical and elemental, and also some extra crit mitigation here as well. And uh, for the lesser one, we are still using Soul of Shakare for the less duration of poison here and the damage reduction to chaos damage over time. Soul of Juggle is another option for some extra uh, reduction here, effect of curses. And in this current setup that we're actually using now, we are at 70% from our flask and also from one of our Yuval. And with this, we would actually make ourselves immune to curses. However, the less duration of uh, poison here uh, from Soul of Shakarai is uh, uh, better for now, in my opinion. Let's take a quick look on our ascendance here, starting with Divine Guidance. Here we get increased maximum mana, and we also get an additional 10% of damage is taken from mana before life. And this combined with uh, Mom is going to boost up this to 50% in total. And we're also getting Transfiguration of Mind here, and this makes it so increase and reduction to maximum mana also apply to damage at 30% of their value. And on this build we are around 400% I believe, so that would add up to a little bit over 100% increased damage from that alone. And then we have Century of Thoughts, uh, we gain 20% uh, of maximum mana as extra energy shield here, uh, some increased mana reservation of uh, skills, not really important to us. We get increased area of effect per 50 unreserved maximum mana, up to a 100%, really huge. And also we get a 50% less mana cost of skill, which is a must have basically. Convocation of Power, which mentioned earlier, we get uh, plus 4 to both Endurance and Power Charges. And also plus 1 to Maximum Power Charges and Maximum Endurance Charges. Arcane Blessing makes it so Arcane Surge grant 20% more spell damage to us. And we will also gain a Arcane Surge when uh, you or our totem hits a enemy. This however is not quite as strong as the support game, so do keep that in mind. We only get around half that we will get from uh, the support game that's linked in our links. That will overwrite this uh, smaller one though, so don't, so you don't have to worry about it. For the Yules here, as mentioned earlier, answers a vision here for the uh, elemental ailment immunity. We also spoke a little bit from the Parendus Pact here, as we get 7% increased armor here from all of these uh, notes that we have picked up here. Really, really great. Uh, we're using one uh, uh, corrupted jewel here for corrupted blood immunity, and also here just some increased mana and cost speed. And then for a normal one, increase maximum life, increase maximum mana, uh, lightning resist, and here also try to go for the reduced effect of curses on us. And for some extra improvements that I still want to do with this build, is uh, going to get a watcher's eye with damage taken from mana before life, while affected by clarity, and uh, for even just more survivability. And just general improvements to the gear overall, as uh, there are quite a bit that I can still do here, I feel. Small tweaks here and there, as uh, most of the gear I've been using for a really long time now. I put a link to the POB in the description, so you can check it out more for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment, and I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. So what do you think about the Archmage Ice Nova Hero Fant? Have you tried it out before, or tried another version of it? Feel free to tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!